Meet Swampletics, my more talked ultimate Iron Man. I've spent over 4,000 hours in just this region of the game. I'm an ultimate Iron Man account, which means I can't use banks, I can't trade other players, and on September 12th, I changed this account forever. As for the real damages, I'm not really sure what my estimates are yet. I did lose a lot. How long has it been? Five months? What has he been doing for five months? I've been given an entirely clean slate. Lost in the blink of an eye. It's only fitting that we call this a season finale. I'll come back stronger than ever before. I'll see you in the movie. What you're about to watch is the result of a five-month journey starting at rock bottom. After my death on the account in September, I was set back several months. A clean slate with nothing to the account's name, but a stat page. I was determined to not only get back to where I was, but I was destined to show that even after thousands of hours in just one region of the game, there's still new discoveries and new ways to play. For episode 32, I decided to team up with Legend Arts as well as Display in order to immortalize what this episode means to me. Half a year in the making. It wouldn't exactly be a movie without a movie poster, would it? In January, I decided to go all out. I wanted something truly special to commemorate episode 32. Legend Arts created exactly that, and all I had left to do was team up with Displate and get this thing printed on a Displate, which if you don't know is a high quality metal poster. It worked out beautifully. Displates take no tools and around 20 seconds of your time to hang using a magnet mounting mechanism that completely protects your wall, so it was the perfect formula to sell the coolest product I've ever had on the channel while making it as hassle-free as possible for all of you. And if the Swampletics movie poster doesn't suit you, I have two more beautiful, super iconic posters alongside it. And if you hate all that, we still have Displate's massive library of artwork. For the next three days, you'll get 25% off any Displate by clicking my link in the description. And after those three days, you'll still get 15% off. So I seriously don't think I've ever sold anything as cool as this. Please give it a look. It's special. It's difficult to truly calculate how much time was lost in the death. Most of the items I lost were RNG-based goals. Full Guffins took me 1,600 chests and 500 hours to complete. The Rune Crossbow took over two months with a massive community search party. Then there was the Abyssal Whip, the tens of thousands of vampires for rubies. This time around, things are going to be a bit different. There's been a lot of discoveries over the course of the series, but I think it's safe to say the two main ones are the Rune Crossbow and Full Guffins. First, we found the possibility of getting a Rune Crossbow. That was once thought to be the only thing that made the Theater of Blood possible. It was a sharp DPS increase over the Carol setup and allowed me to avoid losing an Amulet of the Damned after every run. Then after that came Full Guffins, the holy grail of supply efficiency a built-in ability to heal in the gear that I was already wearing, now that makes the Theater of Blood easier. I now find myself without either of these, but I'm only going to focus on getting one of them back, and that's full Guthans. Guthans should be enough to get myself and a team of three Swampletics clones through the Theater. It'll be much more difficult without a Rune Crossbow, but it wouldn't feel right to ask the community's help again after losing the crossbow to my own mistake. The burden of carrying the TOB completion will rest on the Guthans set. We're gonna have to work for that completion, but it should theoretically be possible without the crossbow. This doesn't mean Lucky Implings are off the table. I'll still be catching whatever Lucky Imps I can in hopes of getting the crossbow back. And there's a few items I could get from them that would be a huge help. Manacles, a God Cloak, but I won't be going out of my way to find them or ask anyone else to go out of theirs. And as such, it's not likely that I get the crossbow back. But who knows, anything can happen. We have our plan. And now, it was time to set it into action.
Shortly after the death, I was in a surprisingly good mood, and honestly, who wouldn't be after this pep talk from one of my best friends, who reminded me that there's no time to be upset about lost items, it was time to look forward. Remember who the fuck you are. I've watched you grind this shit for two years, this is nothing to you, and you know that. <laughs> Fucking love you, dude. You're absolutely right. Get over that goddamn castle, I'm helping you find some in. <laughs> okay. So following that, I got straight to work. In order to get any of the items I lost back, there's one constant that I'd need for everything. And that would be money. GP. I decided to do an all too familiar thing, and that's hop worlds at Fenkenstrain's castle to look for imps. Implings were the perfect thing to get some basic gear and money to start the rebuild momentum. There's not much at all that I can do if I don't get some GP first. So this is where I spent my first few days of the rebuild. Ah, uh, yes, the unicorn horn. Come on, magpie. Come on. Yes! That's so good. That's so, so good. Rune Warhammer. Yo! Rune Square Shield on my second magpie as well. I, like, just started this and I already have a Warhammer and a uh, Square Shield. It's, honestly, this is. Going a pretty good start. I was taking pretty much everything I could get my hands on. Runes, food, tools, anything I could sell for GP. My inventory was entirely clear and I wanted to take advantage. Oh, beautiful. That's one of the things I was looking for as well. Even if I don't use it as actual defense, that's probably like 25k in the general store, so that's really, really nice to get. It only took about two hours of me catching every impling on my screen for my inventory to start looking like this. I'll buy a red cape for now. I'll, I'll be a back to the roots type gamer. Only for now though, it's not a permanent thing. Implings were the key to getting back some of my most important pieces of gear. One day after the death, I set my first rebuild goal, and here's what it was. Priority number one was getting two dragon stones to remake my combat bracelet and ring of wealth. Number two was getting my amulet of glory back. And finally, I needed a rune scimitar. Facing a 1 in 512 drop rate for the whip, I sure as hell didn't want to go attempt it without getting the best weapon for the job and stat boosting jewelry to go with it. If I could get all of this from Implings, I'd have a really solid baseline. All I'm really looking for is enough money to buy an Avandis Flail, a Slayer Staff, some basic tools, and like enough money for boats and stuff, so it's not really that much that I'm looking for now. Dragon Stones! I got them! That's exactly what I needed. That's my combat bracelet, it's my Ring of Wealth. I also have this Ninja Imp to catch, maybe I can get a Rune Scimitar back to back? Uh, okay, Mystic Boots, it's fine. It's uh, like 5k, maybe Dragon Bones. I mean, whatever, I'll go bury him. With such an empty inventory, I was free to hoard just about anything I got for a few days. Honestly, a pretty decent haul with all this. The Oh my god, the Onyx Bolts were so nice. Yeah, 200k-ish, I'm gonna hop worlds. Get the most I possibly can out of this. Definitely 300k, beautiful, and there's still so much more to sell. I knew something was off, I just didn't know what it was, you know, I, I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but much, much better. I'd like to buy a more appropriate cape as well, you know, I don't want to reuse capes of the past and people usually wear black to a funeral, so this will stay as a symbol on my back until the time is right. You'll know when the time is right. Yes, there it is. Yes. Straight up like uh, three full days of catching ninja implings. I finally got this thing I didn't think perfection could be embodied so easily, but and it's about time I get my dragon's medallion back should have done that much much earlier But I now have my teleport to the theater of blood at any time It's now September 16th four days after the death and four days of hunting implings and I officially had everything finally <laughs> I'm so happy, man. Time to make the rest of our jewelry. Let's get some molds. Gonna feel a lot better after I have all my jewelry back. All right, let's unnote this. There we go. It feels good to be back, baby. Amulet of glory. And I'll make an extra combat bracelet just so I can um, sell it later. I don't have any water runes. I can't even... I can't even enchant these. Okay, well, let's let's go look for some water runes then. There we go. Got the water runes. Combat bracelet and Ring of Wealth. 
Beautiful. We've got all the Dragonstone jewelry back in its rightful place. One final selling session, which will hopefully get me to 800k? Question mark. Yep. 802k cash stack as well. Beautiful. It is time to get to work. After getting all my implant goals completed, I started to plan my next moves. All the meanwhile, I made sure to catch any lucky implings that were sent my way. Ooh, black dehyde body. Honestly, that's... Uh, this is nice. If I don't get my carols back before my guffins, this will definitely do, and it's just a decent bit of armor for now. Good bonuses for barrows. Want to use my darts for arum, so it's honestly a really nice thing to get. But what I decided to do next would change this account forever. I started to temple trick. Not for XP tomes, not for bowstring or silver, not for ores or herbs, watermelon seeds. I temple trekked for watermelon seeds. This wasn't just a one-time thing. I mean, I wasn't just trying to get 20 or 30 seeds. I wanted thousands. Look, I'm probably not gonna get the crossbow back. That is a reality that I have to accept. And with no crossbow, we're gonna need to pinch space to make room for as many supplies as possible. So. I came up with this plan. Before the death, I killed thousands of vampires for noted corms and farmed a ton of limpor roots. That's two inventory spaces dedicated to making strength potions. But what if I could dedicate zero spaces instead? If I could get my farming to 56, I could farm my own corms and use the herb patch as a temporary storage. Here's how it would work. Before going into the theater of blood, I go kill necreals for a corm seed. Once I get one, I plant it, I'll super compost it, and that'll be five or six strength potions just sitting there in the patch. Getting just one seed would be enough for several theater of blood attempts. I don't need the limp roots on me either. Using the dungeon behind the Canifus bar, I farm for a very common 1 in 6 limport root from a hobgoblin, drop it into my unfinished potion, and there are my strength pots. It's some extra effort, but without the crossbow, this might be the edge we need to make up for it. I want to get 56 farming as fast as possible, and melons are the answer to that. Armed with my two allotment patches in the entire area, it was time to get to work. The first 10 watermelon seeds. Up to 544 watermelon seeds. That's in the 700 watermelon seed mark. Oh, run plate legs. What a nice upgrade to the gear. I'll redeem it now. Get over that 1,000 watermelon seed mark. Now let's get to 1024. And that is going to be my final temple trek for now. 1,504 watermelon seeds. That'll be a lot of melons. I'm, uh, I'm definitely happy with that. We can drop all this now. We've done a lot of temple trekking over the past day. Watermelon runs became part of my routine. It was pretty simple, really. Since I had permanent access to the boat after paying it in full, I could use this simple path to do my watermelon runs and I saw results pretty quickly. 50 farming, what a nice level, dude. That actually puts me at 50 base stats. Don't look at runecraft. I also made sure to note my watermelons on the tool leprechaun after every farm run. And over time, I just started to have a bunch of noted watermelons in my inventory. Honestly, at the start, I don't really know why I did this. I guess I just wanted to see how many watermelons I end up farming since I only have these two allotment patches to work with. An average harvest would be around 10 watermelons per patch, and I had to use some of those to make more super compost to keep growing more melons. Gotta spend melons to make melons. So collecting watermelons started to mean something to me. And as I slowly started to farm more and more, my watermelon stack grew. I figured I could use the melons for super compost material in the future. And when I inevitably do barrows again, I could use them as food as well. Each of the three melon slices you get heals five HP. So each melon is basically a storage of 15 HP. Functionality aside, it was almost peaceful in a sense, waiting the 80 minutes, harvesting watermelons, reinvesting them into super compost. I started to really enjoy farming and most importantly, stacking 
watermelons. I was still working toward my 56 farming goal. In fact, I was halfway there at this point, but it started to feel as though I wanted more than that. I had made a very important realization. I was no longer in the farming business. I was in the empire business. As I continued to farm, like any good melon empire in its early stages, I ran into some obstacles. My melons just continued to die and die and die. I felt as though almost half the time I came to do a farm run, one of my patches would be dead. And how am I supposed to build a watermelon empire when my children are dying out here? I already had to spend melons to make super compost and I have to deal with my patches dying too? You know, there has to be something in this region, something I can do, something that can stop this. It started with a Google search. There was one way. My sturdy density, when fully grown, will protect watermelon crops from all disease. No seed pack, no master farmer, none of those. You can get them from Firewatch? One in 3,800? As it turned out, there was one way to save my watermelon empire. With Firewatch having an Asturdium seed on their drop table, I could get the seed, babysit it while it grows, and my watermelons would never die again. As soon as I saw the Nasturtium seed on the Firewatch drop table, I had some investigating to do. First of all, I was not about to commit myself to a grind like this without knowing for sure that it's on the drop table. I was able to have Mod Ash confirm not only the existence of the drop, but that the drop rate was lower than 1 in 3800. It was 1 in 3300. That is an extremely rare drop, and it's not from something too easy to kill either. I'd be forced to use the Avandis Flail, and with 90 HP, 85 defense, having no food, killing over 3,000 of them, surely wouldn't be a fast process. It all came down to one question. Is going for a 1 in 3300 seed really worth it? How badly did I want to farm watermelons? I mean, this would be a ridiculous commitment, and the odds are incredibly stacked against me. I started to kill Virewatch and began the journey. The Nasturtium seed itself comes from the so-called seed table. So to get it, I first have to roll the seed table, which is a 1 in 96 chance on its own. After that roll, it'll select a seed from the large selection of seeds on the table, leading to another 1 in 35 chance of it picking the Nasturtium, leaving us with the 1 in 3300 drop rate. While continuing to work toward my 56 farming goal, I sat here at Firewatch and looked for the seed. In a way, it seemed like this was all meant to happen. And that might sound crazy, okay let me explain. Firewatch have a very, very useful drop table to me. I wouldn't have even started killing them without this seemingly useless seed being on their drop table, but thankfully I did. I needed a way to rebuild my cash stack to the once great 20 plus mil GP I used to have. That's money I'm gonna need to keep retrying the Theater of Blood. I, I mean, it costs 100k every time my team wipes. Along with Barrow's armor repair fees, I need a ton of cash. Firewatch dropped nature runes for high alks, blood runes for future Theater of Blood runs, and a ton of alkable drops to get that cash stack back where it needs to be. It's as if it was all a part of the plan. On November 26th, I was tagged in a Twitter post. Lord of Cinder and Burbo attached this picture of a jackal appearing at the BIP ferry ring next to the nature grotto. Assuming this is fully recreatable, a jackal is a type of dog. Now, I know what you're thinking, what the hell are you talking about? Let me refresh your memory. I had a quick look at the wiki on this one, and there's like a 15% chance that I actually get this task in Mortania, so here goes nothing. Oh, never lucky, man. Never lucky, damn. Uh, this could be big. 
I've never completed a Slayer task in Mauritania. If only you knew the amount of things I've tried to think of to complete this dog task. Terror dogs don't count. Guard dogs in your player-owned house don't count. The temple guardian in the Paterdomus temple doesn't count. Can't kill him again. But this, this could work. And also raised another question. If they were able to get a jackal through the fairy ring, could other monsters work? It was time for some RuneScape science. If I'm able to relocate specific monsters in the game to Mauritania, that would be insane. Before testing the jackals themselves, I tested jungle spiders, monkeys, rock slugs, and gorax. None of them worked. So at this point, I just wanted the jackals to work. I made my way over to the BIP fairy ring. Meanwhile, I had my friend Toby go to the DLQ fairy ring. To make this work, Toby teleports from the DLQ fairy ring to BIP repeatedly, and hopefully after enough trial and error, a jackal follows him through the fairy ring. There, there, there. Yes! We got it, baby! <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh! No! Oh, I think you need a whip for this. Here it is. Come on. Ooh! Oh. We got one! <laughs> Let's go, dude. After another eight minutes of jackal spawning and absolutely no luck getting a second kill, I dragged my main here to help with the jackal process. It was clear that I could get the kills, but it took some RNG. From the time of the jackal spawning to the time where it disappears, I have six game ticks to kill it the equivalent of 3.6 seconds. Rune knives seemed to be the best play, seeing as I could fit three rune knives within the six ticks, as compared to two hits with the rune scimitar. Here, here. I got it. First hit. Come on. Yes! Yes! We got Let's it, baby. Oh, go, dude. 55 to go. Dude, that makes me so happy. <laughs> Every time. While I recruited one or two more friends to double the speed of the spawns, I decided to hunt for the fastest weapon I have access to, the Granite Maul. Well, okay, at least its special attack was the fastest. It's a bit of a long shot at a 1 in 256 rate, but it would make the jackal hunting significantly easier. <gasps> no way! Oh my god, I actually got a granite wall, no way, I got a <laughs> I came to Gargoyles with the intention of killing maybe 20, and I killed 7, and got them all. From this point on, killing the jackals became significantly easier. Let's go, Let's go. dude! Come on, yes! Yes, dude! Oh, here you go! What? Uh, what? Uh, um. <laughs> After two and a half hours of jackal spawning, I completed a Slayer task in Mauritania. We did it! Let's go! There it is, Slayer task done. Shout out the gang, Toby, Boop, Sat, uh, Cinder, and Verba for the original tweet. We did it, dude. Completing a Slayer task in Mauritania was incredible. Similar to completing the medium clue scroll in episode 30, it's one of the biggest reasons for me loving playing the game this way. You take these things that are so difficult or previously thought to be impossible and you make it work. You find a way and that was beautiful. The big reveal. <laughs> no. I mean, maybe we'll figure this one out in a couple of years. We can think of this one, boys. Come on. My sights were officially set on the Nasturtium Seed. The faster I get it, the faster I'm able to not only grow my Watermelon Empire in full, but also I'd be able to leverage the resources from Firewatch to set the rest of the rebuild into motion, getting the whip back and starting up Barrows. Getting close to the goal. 54 farming and we're closing in on a four digit melon stack as well thanks to the watermelon obsession i breezed straight past my 56 farming goal quorum farming unlocked and my future strategies are ready to go there's still benefits to getting a higher farming level though it gives me a higher average harvest for anything i pick which is going to be great for quorums and more importantly melons in the future oh dude that this marigold seed 
Oh my, I thought that was the Nasturtium. Like, on the ground, I just... I got like a mini heart attack, dude. <laughs> that scared me seeing that on the ground. As you can see, we do have uh, quite a few seed table rules already. We're at 1353 code count, and that's, uh, I think that, I want to say that's like 13 seed table rules because uh, the onions and potatoes, we got multiple of those. So we're pretty much on drop rate, looking good. Uh, about a third of the way to the actual drop rate. So, hey, 95 defense. The unforeseen benefit of all this is I might actually end up maxing out my melee stats. I mean, it's a crazy amount of XP, so probably not, but it would be cool to have Max Melee on this account. I started the Nasturtium Seed Grind on November 23rd with my first kill. Taking into account that I was sidetracked with Slayer and farming, it was 14 days later now, and I had over 1600 kill count under my belt. What in the shit? What? <laughs> um, first time seeing one of those. That's pretty cool. Uh... Hopefully I get some more rare drop table luck and maybe I can land the uh, 1 in 12,000 rune kite shield. Oh, another seed table roll, jute seeds. It's like my third seed table roll in 20 kills. There's so many seeds on the ground. Well, we're up to 2045 kills. Looking pretty good, uh, and we're getting pretty close to 5 mil cash as well. I honestly forget this dungeon exists sometimes, but uh, I am on a mission to get a fire staff from here because I'm... Uh, running pretty low on fire runes for high elks. There we go, fire staff, beautiful. Infinite fire runes, 58 farming. Very, very nice. Simultaneously, massive milestone in the Melon Empire, 2000 noted. So it's been almost three weeks now since I started and I've officially hit the drop rate. We're at 3.3K Firewatch killed. I hope this doesn't go double, triple, quadruple the drop rate. Uh, it's it's a very, very long process to kill these guys. Not the worst thing to go dry on, at least. I do have nearly 7 mil cash now from this and a ton of runes, so... Hey! <laughs> Welcome back, shield left half. I mean, it's... It's a decent alk. A 96 defense, beautiful. All I need to do now for max melee is go extremely, extremely dry for this seed. Oh my god, it actually happened! No way! I was not at all expecting to- Oh my god. Dude, I actually got the kite before the seed! No way! 1 in 12,000 from the rare drop table, no way. Absolutely awesome, dude. Just under 4,000 KC. Takes however long it takes, you know. That is, uh, 3,700 kill count. How rare is that? How rare is that? Especially since I've crossed the 5,000 KC mark now, so... Looks like double the drop rate is looking... Pretty likely at this point, uh, tons of supplies, but yeah, 5,000 kills. Very defining moment for the rebuild, I think. Uh, 10 mil cash stack, we're back in the green after, uh, I don't even know if I thought I'd have this much of a cash stack again. Wow, how rare is that? That is my first time getting Onyx Bolts. That's my first time getting them in 5,700 kills. Look at that, wow. Oh my god, no way, no way, oh my god, no way, <laughs> I can't believe it dude, no way, I just, I, 5,771 Firewatch. I think it's safe to say no one in RuneScape history has ever spent more than 20 minutes going for an Asturdium Seed. In fact, the average player could buy 25 of them two minutes after spawning in the game. They're one coin each. Well, I just spent 26 days killing nearly 6,000 Firewatch to get mine. I can't stop looking at it, man. Now I have to babysit this thing as if it's my firstborn and make sure it doesn't die. I'm gonna have to fill up this watering can and keep some plant cure on us while this thing grows. It takes 20 minutes for an Asturdium to grow, so as long as I'm chilling here with plant cure, I'll be able to cure it of disease if it happens. 
Uh, but since I'm gonna be watering every cycle, that's unlikely that it even gets disease, but I will be ready for anything. I have every tool available to make sure this thing doesn't die. Yeah, baby, we got flowers! My watermelons will officially never die again. God, I just really need to not pick them on accident now, because the first option on them is pick. I was in fact so afraid of picking these nestardiums on accident that I had Goody write me a runelite plugin to switch the options and make pick not the first option, so that even if I misclicked on them, I can't pick them. I had exactly what I wanted. I can watch my watermelon empire grow without the fear of them dying. And that's definitely not the only thing I got from this grind. I don't think I could have given myself a better baseline for the rebuild. I've got 10 mil cash for the Theater of Blood Wipes and Barrow's Armor Repairs. I got a ton of Blood Runes back, and I have starting Death Runes for Barrow's. It's time to get my whip back. No more stalling. It could be rough going dry on Abyssal Demons with a rune scimitar could mean probably a week or two of grinding, but uh, whatever happens, happens. I need to get started now. The faster I get the whip back, the faster I can go to Barrows, the faster I'm back to form. So here we go. Day one of Abyssal Demons begins. Oh my god, no way! Oh my god, I already got it back. I already got it back. I don't even know how long I've been here. I am maybe like a few hours. <laughs> it's unbelievable. 112 Abyssal Demons. That's my second whip on the account, which means I've killed like 160 Abyssal Demons for two whips on here. Actually blessed, bro. Making up for that Nestodium Seed RNG, we are back in business. Got the best weapon for the job. Oh, such a big weight lifted because that could have really been something pretty rough to go dry on with uh, only a rune scimitar, but with the whip back in my possession, I was almost ready to start up Barrows in full force. There was one more drop I needed before I commit, and that was rune boots. First, I had to tend to my melon runs, of course. I now have nearly 2,700 noted watermelons, by the way, and 60 farming. Boom, looks so clean, man. Used to be my lowest stat, aside from runecrafting, of course, and soon it'll be up there with the greats at this rate. I mean, hitting 70 would be one hell of an accomplishment with only two allotment patches, so I think that's like the big goal here, but 60 looks amazing. That Sturdium Seed just makes everything so freaking nice. I, I know my patches are gonna be alive when I get here. I know I'm getting XP when I come here, you know, it's it's great. With the Nasturtium seed planted, I was consistently getting around 25 melons per run. With no more walking into dead crops every visit to the allotments, it was a great experience. Boom, easy as that, there we go. Rune boots, the last item pre-Barrows grind. We're basically back to form here. All we're missing for our setup is the full Guthin set and some carols, but we're about to get to the Barrows grind. It feels good to have all this gear again. I feel like I'm in a very, very solid place right now, so... The Barrows grind is pretty self-explanatory. I need six items of the 24 possible for the Theater of Blood. Guthins is obvious. Spear go stab, I get health back. But even without the rune crossbow, I want some offensive ranged equipment as well, and I'll be replacing the rune crossbow with either dragon darts or rune knives. We'll be going for the Carol's top, and bottom alongside Guthins to make that a better setup. My first Barrow's chest is gonna have to be with Fire Wave, but hopefully after this chest, I can get some Mind Runes. The plan is just to use Slayer Dart all the way through. It's super nice that I have 90 magic because my max hit with Slayer Dart is gonna be, I believe, 19, which is amazing. Barrow's has always been a slow plot on this account. I've done all my Barrow's chests through either the Shades of Morton minigame teleport or a brisk walk from the Theater of Blood, to the six hills. With no prayer restoration or little to usually no food, 
Barrels on this account maxes out at just about four chests an hour. Yes, perfect, beautiful. That's enough to just keep building off of now. We can go grab our Slayer Staff and Slayer Staff, there we go. Um, I'm gonna be doing defensive casting for however long it takes me to get my Barrows items back. I wanna get as close to 99 defense as possible and I don't really need more magic levels anyway, so this is the setup. We are uh, locked and loaded pretty much. I've got enough Slayer Dark cast to just keep going until I get all my items back. Just finished up chest 1655, so let's get back there and see what our first item is going to be. Oh my god. No way. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> What an amazing first item to get back. That's already one of the six I needed. Like that one obviously wasn't super necessary because I have the black dehyde body, but it is really cool to have it back so early. Although my Barrow's goals are to get my six previously owned items, there are some short-term goals that make the grind a lot easier, and that's tank armor. 1668. Ooh, there we go. We got some armor, actually. That I mean, okay, it sucks. Like, I'm not gonna lie. It's not a great piece of armor, but it's something. It's much better than a black dehyde body for melee defense, so back to back. What? <laughs> um, okay. So, I guess I don't need this anymore. <laughs> That's, uh, two pieces of carols in, like, 16, 17 chests. That's insane. That is so insanely lucky. I only need guffins now. And purple sweets. I've officially passed the 3000 watermelon mark, which might be one of the greatest accomplishments of our generation. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God, I got a spear. No freaking way. Holy shit, dude. No way. That's so sick. I can't believe I got it this early. This is my third item. The th I'm three out of six. I'm not even the full 40 chests deep. Loot from 35 Barrows chests looking pretty damn good. I was two days deep into the Barrows grind and I already had half of the items I was looking for. It was extremely exciting, but I know how this works. It's a dangerous game to get excited this early because I had a similar bout of luck the first time around. Yeah, I got two pieces of the set in the first couple days of the grind and then it took two months to get my third piece. 61 farming. I can grow my own snape grass now, which I don't know if I'm gonna do that. I could make my own prayer pots that way because snape grass is pretty scarce around here, but uh, it is nice to have that ability. 1700 Barrows chests. Ah, another Varakian Brassard. You see, I, you'd think I'd be upset at this or something, but I can alk my old one. Alks for 168k, and then I just put on this new one. It's a uh, top 10 questions science still can't answer. How does he do it? Oh, Derek's great axe. Pretty good thing to get early, I guess. Can use it for flinching. I guess it's honestly a pretty good item to have. Yo, <laughs> is this the return? The return of Swamp Wizard? Is he back, bro? Oh, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Oh, I barely got that done. <laughs> that was... <gasps> yes, beautiful. And I got a piece of tank armor out of it. That's nice. I have an actual piece of tank armor now. That's beautiful. Let me just showcase to you how bad the Varex Brassard is. Look at the difference in these bonuses. Like, the Varex Brasser just is not a good chest plate. It's not. But... We're now officially 100 Barrows chest deep in the rebuild, and our luck has been pretty damn good. There's 62 farming. Beautiful. You love to see it. Every day that I get a farming level is a good day. Can now grow Snapdragons. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Would have been better if this was a Guthans helmet, but still, it's a tank helm and helps me do barrows a lot more efficiently, so. <sighs> yes! Yes! 
Oh my god, yes, dude. The chain skirt. I probably got a, a way more happy than I should be for that, but this was one of the two items that I spent 1600 chests getting last time. <laughs> With the chain skirt down, there was just two Barrows pieces to go. The Guthin's helm and chest plate. It was the chest plate last time that gave me the most trouble, so the question of the day was, does history repeat itself? And there is 1,800 Barrows, Casey. Better tank legs uh, than Guthans, at least, but, uh... Just breached the 4,000 watermelon milestone. The Empire is looking good. Ninety-seven defense, pretty sick. Only two levels away from maxing out the melees, and they're sixty-three at farming. No, no, the duplicate chain skirt. It may be hard to comprehend a milestone of this magnitude, but we just crossed the five thousand. Noted watermelon mark. On day 12 of Barrows, I almost beat my record for chests done in a single day. 49 in a 24 hour period. This is how my day ended. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god, I got a plate body, let's go! Yes, yes, yes! Guffin's plate, baby! One piece to go! Just the Guffin's helmet, it will not be the chest plate this time. And so began the hunt for one single item at Barrows. It's never a fun time when you only need one thing out of 24, but five out of six, it felt good. Running really low on melon seeds, so I'm gonna be temple trekking for a bit, build up the reserves so I can continue uh, the empire growth, and straight back to a thousand seeds. Aram's hood. How you doing? 65 farming, beautiful. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, talk about deja vu, man. With just one Barrows piece to look for, I continued the push to 2,000 Barrows chests. And sure enough, on day 14, I got there. 2,000 Barrows chests. You're gonna get nothing. Nah, 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 nah. Told you. Mm. Told you, I'm from the future. Uh, sorry. Uh, listen, I'm, since I am from the future, I'll give you a little bit of hope. Okay. You're going to get the item you want within the next 8,000 chests. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hell, you're goddamn way up there. If I kill this guy and he drops a water rune, you have to leave the call. God, I hope he gets a water rune. Does he have a 100% chance of dropping a water rune? <laughs> <laughs> With the 2,000 chest milestone off the bucket list, it was time to pick up the pace and get this helmet. 6,000 watermelon milestone and 66 farming in the same run. How am I supposed to deal with this much success? <laughs> okay, that's pretty awesome. Look how fashionable I look. 67 farming Darox plate legs. I'm missing... What? I haven't killed a ghoul in 5,000 hours? No way, that has to be fake, bro. Oh my god, guys, we did it. Easy task completed. How long do you plan to do this before you decide to try the theater without Guthans? Uh, that's not an option. Yeah, I mean, it takes however long it takes. Like, if I'm here until 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 chests, that's, that's how long it takes, you know? I just, I physically cannot do it without Guthans now. Final chest of the night. Ever lucky. What the fuck? What, what am I looking at right now? What the shit? What? Oh my god, dude. About to look up the odds on this as well, because that, that has to be one in a couple million. Like, that is just 
so insanely rare so it looks like the odds are one in 7.35 million so the only thing i can find anywhere is this iron man who got a quad chest in 2016 and also this guy who got one in 2019 and I'm sure there's probably others, but the fact that I got this on a Mauritania locked account of all accounts is an amazing experience that's actually insane. You know, expansion isn't easy, but one melon at a time gets you to great places. Hi, YouTube. Yes, this is YouTube. Who is speaking? All right, I'm going to open this chest. No shenanigans, just going to open it. Oh my god! Oh my god! I actually got it! Oh my god! Oh my fucking god, I got it! Oh my god! I'm done! I'm done again! The rebuild is done! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! No fucking way! Well, it only took 526 Barrows chests to get full Guffins this time around. About a third of the KC that it took me the first time. Four months and 13 days after losing it all, I clawed my way back. From utter rock bottom, we made our way here. And I wasn't finished yet. I told you toward the start of this video that you'd know when the time was right. Which makes what happened just two days after getting the helmet only describable as fate. This will stay as a symbol on my back until the time is right. You'll know when the time is right. On January 27th, Shades of Morton received a rework. Originally proposed in December, the rework made massive changes both graphically and functionally to the Shades of Morton catacombs. Among the new additions, we have the new highest tier of shade, the Urium Shade which now has its respective room and respective chest, requiring a gold key. Silver keys used to be the highest tier of shade key. Now we have gold. I didn't know it just yet, but there was an update here that was about to change everything. Look, I was not about to just walk into the theater of blood with this bland, uninspired cape. The black cape was meant to be a placeholder, a symbol on my back. This was no longer a funeral. This was a full form revival and I just needed the thing to show it. Along with the rework came a collection of five wearable coffins from bronze to gold. Each coffin is able to hold a certain amount of shade remains inside from three at the lowest tier to 28 once you have gold. We've gone through quite a few capes on the time of this series and in a weird way, it's become a huge part of putting a label on each chapter of this two year long journey. Each cape has meant something for the respective time of the account, and what I was looking for was the true final cape of the series. And I could think of no better, more fateful item than the most difficult one of these coffins to obtain in the region, the Golden Coffin. Something about the Golden Coffin being the final cape of the series seemed incredibly poetic to me. After dying and losing it all in September and having to start from scratch to carry that coffin figuratively, yet physically on the back of my character served as an awesome metaphor to me, and it looked really, really cool. And yeah, I could just go for a silver coffin and call it a day, but since when do we half-ass things around here? This is, this is about making a statement. Theater of Blood Capes aside, the Golden Coffin is the hardest obtainable cape in the entire region. There's no sane reason for me to grind this, and that's exactly why I wanted it. It's the hardest coffin to get. So game on. Little did I know what I was getting myself into. Meet Dompe. He's the new NPC outside the Shades of Morton Catacombs, and to get yourself a coffin, you give Dompe a lock respective to the coffin that you want, and he puts it together for you. Each shade chest now has one of these locks as a potential reward, the gold lock being in the new highest tier of chest, and that was the problem. Gold keys come from the new Urium shades, and to burn an Urium shade, you need 95 fire making and redwood logs, neither of which I have, but there was another way. The previous king of the shades was the fire shade, and fire shades could only be burned on magic pyre logs. 
And this is how you'd get silver keys. But you didn't need fire shades to get silver keys. You could go one tier lower, you could burn a sin shades on U logs, and you'd still have a low chance of getting a silver key, but at least you didn't need to grind magic logs. Well, same thing applies here. I don't need to grind redwood logs. I could just go one tier lower, burn magic logs with fire remains, and I'd have a much lower chance of getting the gold key in return. There's only one gold key on the fire shade table, gold key red, but that's all I need. That means I'm able to get a gold key and I don't need redwood logs or 95 fire making. So it all boils down to getting my hands on magic logs in Mauritania. Easier said than done in a region with no magic trees at all. Once I manage to get a gold key, I open the chest for a 1 in 60 chance at the gold lock. That's how I get my golden coffin. So, how the hell do I get magic logs in a region with no magic trees? Well, I have three options. The first option is nature implings. Method number two would be farming silver keys in hopes of getting noted magic logs as a reward. And the final method is killing level 61 to 80 zombies in Tarn's Lair for a 1 in 64 drop rate. On January 27th, I would start with method number 2. Before we get started on the gold lock grind, it's important that I get as much inventory space as physically possible. Shades of Morton is very, very rough with low inventory space, and even with this amount of space, I'll have to juggle a lot of items. Day one was all about feeling out the grind. At this point, I was wondering, well, how hard could it really be to get a gold lock? If I could just get my hands on some noted magic logs, I could get it all rolling. I set up an efficient system of getting remains, getting U logs, and burning them for silver keys in return. The coffin being able to hold remains in it actually makes the entire grind significantly easier. I don't have a bank to put the remains in, and this was the next best thing. So if I could obtain even the silver coffin, it would make getting the golden coffin significantly easier. <gasps> yes! On the line! Oh my god, on the final one! Let's go! Yes! With my first coffin down, I continued on. It became a lot more efficient being able to store remains. Despite that, I had some unfortunate results. Even with the coffin, even with an efficient method of burning a sin remains for the silver keys, I didn't get a single magic log. I was four days and over 150 silver keys deep. I just learned how to make swamp bark. How rare is that from a silver key? I thought you could only get that from gold. What? No way, dude. Back to back from silver chests. Not only had it been four days without a single gold key, but it's been four days without a single opportunity to even get a gold key in the first place. It was time to go back to the drawing board. This was clearly not working. On day five, I took an entirely new approach. So after just 30 minutes of hopping around for implings, I got my first magic log from a nature impling and then another one an hour after that. Nature Implings definitely seemed like a solid option, but I walked my way over to the zombies in Tarn's Lair and got two more magic logs over the course of an hour. Obviously, the sample sizes weren't big whatsoever, but I enjoyed killing the zombies at Tarn's Lair for magic logs way more than the other two options. It seemed like an extremely reliable method, and it would give me an opportunity to max out my melee stats as well by getting these final two defense levels. It was so much better than Shade Chest that I just never looked back. After about five hours, I had my first batch of eight logs ready to be burned. Just one, one gold key. Yes! Yes! It was all worth it, baby. We got one. Oh, I'm so happy. We've got one. We can open one gold key. Opening gold keys was always an event. I live streamed my entire process of getting the logs and then opening the gold keys if we got any at the end of that day. Amulet of the Damned, it's fine. We still have one more key to open. That's all we need, right? We only need one. No! Sometimes a stream ended without getting a gold key, but when we finally got one after a long, hard day of killing zombies, people wanted to be there for it. I was 1800 zombies deep into the grind when I got 98 defense. It was at this point that I decided to calculate the odds of what I'm trying to accomplish here. Zombies drop magic logs at a rate of 1 in 64. The odds of getting a gold key from that magic log is 1 in 6.4, and then the odds of getting a gold lock from that key is 1 in 60. So in short, the odds of getting the gold lock per zombie kill is 1 in 24,576. 
That's roughly how many zombies I'll have to kill. Just think about this, but gold. That's right, I said it, gold. Just passed 2,000 zombie KC. Opening three gold keys. Contrary to popular belief, today was in fact not the day, but uh, tomorrow is a new one. Tomorrow is a new day. We'll, uh, we'll be opening more keys tomorrow, hopefully. Tune in. Oh my god. Holy shit. Um. There is so many people here. And here we are. The final combat level. We're officially max melee on the swamp account. I mean, we're a quarter of the way there, pretty much. Pretty much a quarter of the way. 7,616 zombies killed and 190 magic logs pressed some, uh, some from nature implings, obviously. We're getting there, though. We are getting there. No, no, it's not 1 in 30k. It's 1 in 24 point something. I calculated it a while ago. It's not 1 in 30. It's not that bad. Oh, it's silver. We tried, but this is already insane. We've already got more than we bargained for here. Well, I have to thank all of you who tuned in. It's, uh, I know we've been doing this for a month now. Uh, you guys, some of you have been here every single stream. It's actually been insane, and, uh, thank you for being with me on this grind. Mm hmm I'm watching. Our voice is gonna be in here, too. Good luck. Cool. Yeah, I can include them. Fuck yeah, dude. <clears throat> oh, let's go, dude. <laughs> Let's that's go. All. Three? Don't get greedy, dude. That's enough. <laughs> oh my no. God. Bro. <laughs> what? This is not number four. There's no way. No, there's no way. There's right? no way this is number four. No way. You gotta give oh, it back. Yeah, yeah. You gotta be humble sometimes. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Abundance is not cool. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Too much of anything is bad for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, next one. Typical, dude. Tip. <gasps> oh my god! <gasps> oh my god! Oh my, god. What? oh my fucking god! Yo. Oh my god! Brother! I got it! That's the item! That's the last the item. item! That's the last <laughs> item! I got it, dude! You're going to TOB, dude. No way! <laughs> oh my god, oh. it finally happened! No <laughs> way, and I have one more key! <laughs> He, I said, bless me, King, and this guy blessed me. He actually, he made this happen, bro. <laughs> don't dox him, though. Don't yeah, show his username. Please don't dox him, guys. After getting the gold lock, there was no better way to celebrate than picking up yet another monumental achievement along the way. This is the only time we'll see the melon stack at 999, guys. Appreciate it while it lasts. All right, here we go. A very, very important melon. Let's do it. We've been waiting for this for a long, long time. We did it, guys. 10,000 melons! Five digits, baby, look at that! It's actually beautiful, it's just, it just feels so right. It feels so right. The Golden Coffin was one of the more daunting grinds I've done in my time on RuneScape due to the sheer odds of every piece of that puzzle, but having it, Knowing I worked so hard to get it felt amazing. Took a total of 14,715 zombies, hundreds of nature implings, and 45 gold keys to get the lock in the end. I was actually pretty lucky, but I was willing to take the chance. I started grinding for it on January 27th and got it on March 10th. Despite still missing a rune crossbow, I had weirdly never felt more ready for the Theater of Blood. Obviously, I never expected to have to do a rebuild from the ground up, but weirdly, I'm very glad I did. Finding fun in completing a Slayer task once thought impossible or 
Starting a watermelon empire reminded me that there's more to having fun on an account than just getting gear and getting the show on the road. It's been an absolute pleasure to make 32 episodes of Swampletics. And it'll be a pleasure to make one more. God damn, it feels good to say this. In the next episode, we'll be taking on one of RuneScape's biggest challenges. The Theater of Blood. It's pretty painful to look at this clip because this is the last clip I have of my account being alive. For those unfamiliar with Ultimate Iron Man death mechanics, the game mode is structured in a way where you don't keep any items on death. I'm gonna make the most of this. Uh, I'm gonna get it all back. I have a plan. I'll come back stronger than ever before. I'll see you in the movie. You take these things that are so difficult or previously thought to be impossible and you make it work. You find a way, and that was beautiful. It could be rough going dry on Abyssal Demons with a rune scimitar could mean probably a week or two of grinding. Oh my god, no way! Oh my god. With no prayer restoration or little to usually no food, Barrows on this account maxes out at just about four chests an hour. Do you ever get tired of this? No, I, I, honestly, you'd think you'd think so, right? But honestly, it's you guys that make this shit so easy. Like, th this is not a problem for me. I could do thousands of Barrow's chests and never get the Guthans pieces. I'd be fine. Uh, like, it, it's you guys that make this such an easy process. Like, all the love that you guys show me is fucking unreal. Hi, YouTube. Yes. This is YouTube. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! I actually got it! Oh my god! Oh my fucking god, I got it! The rebuild is done! Oh my god! There's no sane reason for me to grind this, and that's exactly why I wanted it. It's the hardest coffin to get. So game on. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh it's my the god! It's the last item. <laughs> that's the item! You're that's the last me. item! You're going to T.O.B, dude. Remember who the fuck you are. I've watched you grind this shit for two years. This is nothing to you, and you know that. Fucking love you, dude. You're absolutely right. Get over that goddamn castle. I'm helping you find some imps. 